No problem. Yeah, you know how to work a lavalier mic. Yeah, dude. I've had a couple of these tapped. I've been tapped. Okay, here we go. Old pro. Alright, that looks okay. So for professional. Yeah, dude. I just don't, you know, I don't want to intimidate the other hikers or whatever. They see a bunch of wires on us and think, oh, shit. Uh-oh, it's the fucking feds. <laughs> Is there a drug deal going up, down, up on that mountain? <laughs> Hi, his name's Barney. Barney. I yeah, love I that name. Yeah, I consider him more like uh, uh, Deputy Barney Fife, not like the purple. Uh, he's more of a Don Mock oh, okay. and he has a, a purple dinosaur. Let me, Mark. Mark. Kristen. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's let this guy pass and then we'll go. Because okay. it's over where the tunnel is, right? Uh, yeah, it's just across the street there. You see those well, actually, signs? Yeah, we can, let's, yeah, we can go. Uh, yeah. Um, um, so hey, you but, see the signs across the street? Yeah, so we can go yeah. to the tunnel, right? Oh, I don't. I didn't know oh, about I'll the tunnel. Oh, I'll show you the tunnel. Dude, I've just been flying across this highway. Yeah, like, this is or like, street. People yeah. drive fast. They, they drive do. like it's a highway, dude. Um, I have found I'm, all the little secret uh, tunnels in Griffith Park. Oh, wow. Where's Barney? He's coming. <laughs> oh, this guy passed. Come here, bud. There he is. da 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 Oh well, yeah, there you are, you silly dog. Oh, he's so good. He I love is. his haircut. Got the little lion going on. <laughs> yeah, there's um. I mean, having Barney, I just try to not go on this road because they are they're crazy people. Yeah. I but I get it because um I what I I live in North Hollywood, uh-huh. and this is just a great through pass to whatever Silver Lake. Yeah. If I need to just drop drop into Gelson's, I guess. Huh? Yeah. But now you're over over on that side now, right? Yeah, I'm on uh, like Chevy Chase in Colorado. Oh my God, you're at the the corner of weed and comedy. I don't know. <laughs> Is that? Well, Chevy Chase the from Saturday Night Live, right? Oh yeah. And yeah, Colorado yeah. is just weed country. Oh yeah. I see where you're going now. <laughs> I see where you went with that. Yeah, I uh, I love Glendale. It's like a it's like a like a real city inside of a, a fake city. Because I feel like LA is definitely a fake city. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I do. Like my, I I like it because my neighbors are really quiet and um, like the people who own the house are really quiet too. So I live in a back house. Me too. It's Whoa. the shit, yeah, man. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best. P- people who live in L.A. need to find a back house situation. <laughs> well, it's so funny. So I'm in a back house, and they're building two apartment buildings, one on each side of my place. And I'm just like, these were nice little places where you could have put a, a water, you know, two or, two or three unit back house on it, but they just made them ugh. But all yeah. this new apartment construction in LA is very ugly. Yeah, nothing yeah. I can do about it. My landlord's good though. He just wants to collect our rent. He's not interested in making a big fat paycheck. So, yeah, I'm very lucky. Might ask for cash. The rent in for- cash. Nice. A couple weeks ago. Nice. I, I guess. I mean, I was just kind of like thrown off. I'm like, I don't have that. I don't make that kind of cash, man. 
Hey, I'm not a waitress. Go, now I gotta go to the fucking bank. I know. I'm like, I'm not just gonna go to the damn bank for you for free. <laughs> 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 you take a little, like, even if he offered to take 50 bucks off the rent, I'd probably have been like, okay. Yeah. But just because he was just like, oh, yeah, can I get in cash? Like, why? Uh, oh, probably because you want are getting like some kind of supplemental income from the government, and if they see that twelve hundred dollars is going into your bank every yep, month, then yep. you won't get that anymore. Uh, yes, there's a problem. Then what's in it for me? Well, then, <laughs> sure. I mean, with the, everything, I'll say this: LA is definitely a scam. The whole city yeah. is just like everybody's got some kind of hustle. Dude, or something. I don't mind the cash hustle, but I'm just like, you know, it's it's not it's not really a hustle unless it. What am I getting out of it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, where's where's your uh, you got you got to pay the vig. I don't but know. That's, that's Maybe hilarious. I'm selfish, but I'm also like, man, don't just try to take advantage of me because I'm a woman. Uh, like I kind of throw that up too. I'm like, yeah. you know, sometimes I feel like you know these guys just like, oh, these, she's a lady living by herself. She must not know anything, and just like try to do shit. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely it's it's weird. I definitely feel for. Uh, women, especially in this town, especially in this industry, yeah. it's just like it's. I, I just watched last night Kid Ninety. It's on Hulu. It's a like Soleil Moonfry just basically got all the footage of her childhood and made a documentary uh-huh. of it. Wait, who did Soleil Moonfry? Oh, okay. who was, used to be Punky Brewster. Oh, cool. Yeah, and it's really it's really good. It's oh got my like God. you know Stephen Dorff and. That's the awesome. Charlie Sheen, like it's really all the the people she grew up with yeah. that were all actors. Um, you know, they they were all kid actors, and uh, yeah, you just see how it just ground them up, you know. And it's you yeah. know she's telling it at least from a, a woman's point of view, a woman that was probably had the same kind of strength that you have, you know. Because I think there's a lot of people that come to this town that don't don't know how uh, much it will try to eat you up yeah. especially if you're a woman <laughs> yeah at least i had a little interim in chicago oh yeah. I was like, <laughs> like a rehearsal I was like, yeah it was like a rehearsal dinner <laughs> food is just thrown at you so look <laughs> all right tunnels this is cool yeah i'm so excited to learn about this tunnel so now i don't have to risk my life yeah. crossing the street sometimes i have like ankle weights on too where i'm like Shit, dude, I'm not gonna be able to run as fast. <laughs> I really gotta, I really gotta remember to <laughs> put these on after I cross this fucking road. <laughs> yeah, I love because uh, obviously all this these tunnel systems were set up for the horses, uh-huh. um, so they don't have to cross the street. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. But Barney and I take full advantage of them. Right. And they go uh, there's they go all the way to. That side of the park, there's one over at the very south side of the park. Cool. You don't really get it over by the, uh, I, you know, I. How do you I'll park call... in that lot then? Because now that I know that this is here, I want to park there. Oh, yeah. That's just the <laughs> zoo parking lot. I had it. Yeah, you uh, just got to come around. It's The entrance is right there. Okay. And then, yeah, you can just park right over here. I do it all the time. Okay. I, yeah. I went that way from uh, some other street. I went and saw the zoo parking lot and. I couldn't figure out how to get in. Well, you just got to go farther <laughs> over by, you got to get over to the, like where the Autry is. Yeah. And then there's a right there and you can go in. Okay. I know this park, like the goddamn back of my hand. There's also, I mean, another <laughs> secret tunnel over by, God, the carousel, I guess, kind of. Yeah. Uh, that goes right to the river. There's a little secret tunnel over here that goes to the river. There's, if you go to the dog park, which is just on the other side of the five over there. Uh-huh. Uh, there's another secret tunnel. That one's super secret because that's just somebody cut a hole in the fence. Mm. But this is your... Well, you could just get in through here. You could just drive in sneaky through oh, yeah. here oh, and yeah. get in there. You're not supposed to go in this way, apparently, but... Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Ta-da. So, yeah, if you, get, if you come with a friend and they get stuck up there, you can just drive your car and pick them up. But why would somebody get stuck at the top? You know, I feel like you just have to roll downhill if you need if you're, if yeah. you're injured. <laughs> Wait, I, so so where are you? Wait, you're you're originally from some cold part of the world, right? Yeah, I'm from Ohio. Woo. I'm from Dayton, Ohio, which Shoo. is uh, about an hour north of the Ohio Kentucky border. And so we get a lot of <laughs> yeah, it gets cold. 
it gets icy. People don't realize like how icy and get it gets and how dangerous the ice can be because we get the co- cold coming from the north and then like the warm coming in from the south at certain points and then like all your stuff is covered in a thin sheet of ice like for half the year <laughs> can't do it can't do it my mother left detroit <laughs> because she hated the cold i am not a i'm not a fan of that kind of cold that brutal have to deal with it every day yeah i've already got seasonal de- depression i'm sure it would be much worse if i had to deal with cold every day yeah yeah, yeah. definitely I would say when I moved out here, I, I felt like an elevation in my mood. Yeah. From. Yeah. I mean, I'm such a just, Cal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such a Californian. I get both kinds yeah. of seasonal depression. I get a little bit, a little bit in winter, and a, a little bit less. Like right now, I'll be going through a little tiny. Yeah. After oh. the time change. Spring's coming. Yeah. The damn time change. It's <laughs> it's brutal. Lost an hour. <laughs> it's brutal. It's like and it's... I had a show last night. Oh yeah, how'd it go? Oh, it was so fun. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Those guys at the Renegades of Comedy, they're the real assholes, funny assholes. Oh good. <laughs> they're good. I mean, I feel like uh, as long as you can get along with the assholes and get booked by them, oh yeah, <laughs> it's not so bad. That's uh, yeah, I've uh. I meant assholes as an endearing term. Like, I'm really glad that they've been putting this stuff all, all together for, yeah. like, exactly a year now. Wow. And all the flack that they caught for it, you know, and everybody's yeah. like, people are going, this is Mike, and they're catching COVID. And I'm like, yeah, probably a little bit, but. I don't <laughs> think so. Here's, here's, the way, here's the way I look at it. I don't it. know. <laughs> I'd say we know people in our community yeah. Who have just decided that if you are in the world whatsoever and breaking the rules, taking a risk whatsoever, yeah. you are part of the problem. Yeah. You're literally killing grandmother. Yeah. And I don't think that's true, number one. Yeah. But also Me number either. two. <laughs> huh? I, I number two, I also think that if we don't take some risks in our life, what is the Point in fucking living, right, dude? Yes. <laughs> if the if the like, think about all the animals in captivity, yeah. where you're like, oh well, they're safe and they it, they have all the food because I give them all the food and they have all this and I'm like, oh well, yeah, these big animals would probably rather be free. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I so I'm going to tell you a crazy. Uh, a little bit of a horror story. Don't get too sad. <laughs> so I had a... When my father passed away, he had this cranky old cat, Misty. That was really my stepmother's cat. Uh-huh. She was the only person. They found the cat. She was mostly feral. She didn't get along with anybody except for my stepmother. A little bit with my dad when she passed away. Yeah. And then occasionally she'd come and sit on my lap after my dad died. Oh. She was just, and she's just mean. She's like, she's, I guess you. Yeah, no. she's just mean, feral cat that they kind of domesticated. I had, a, <laughs> I had an incident when I was a kid where my where they went out of town. So they brought the cats by my place where I lived in Long Beach for me to watch them for a week or two or whatever it was. And literally Misty went into the garage and I didn't see her for the whole two weeks. She's just like, fuck this shit. We'd leave food out for her, she'd eat it. Yeah. She was not a nice cat. <laughs> so, by the time my dad died, though, she was living on top of the fridge. Uh, She'd just come down to get some food <laughs> and squirt oh some god. diarrhea all over the place. Oh my god, just, really? Just, you know, whatever, just a sick old cat. Damn it. <laughs> sick, poor old sick cat. Uh, now, poor kitty. I had a choice to go and take her to someplace and have her put down uh-huh because it's just a lot of responsibility at that point yeah uh with the diarrhea ch- everywhere I, all the time that sounds yeah but i chose to take her to this whatever it was like a, a, a an empty lot where i knew other stray cats hung out yeah and i took her there and let her go 
And I know she's a little bit of an old cat. <laughs> she might have had a hard time just <laughs> helping herself. Yeah, but yeah. I at least gave her the opportunity, you know, to die a wild animal rather than, you know, right. be factory euthanized. And it's a tough story for me because it's like, what is the right answer? Me choosing to have a veterinarian kill my <laughs> kill my cat, right? Who's who? All of all of her loved ones are gone, really, all right? Or or giving the opportunity to fend for, for herself for a little while. Yeah, be a real cat. Yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, even though I had a lot of guilt and shame about that for years, I I ultimately think I did the right thing because we live in a culture that's just like. Always going to make you feel like shit, no matter what, right. what you choose. So it's like, just stick to your guns and have a good justification. Yeah, I think that's a good story. Okay, Because cats want to, I mean, I've had my cat for like 15 years. And for the first 10 years, she was inside only. Like, she would not go out there, even if I tried. And like... Then eventually, like, I started getting in places. I moved to California, really, is what happened. And, like, I had more outdoor spaces because, I don't know, California is like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, like, she goes out, and now she craves it. Like, she just wants to go outside all the time. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this is, like, this is your nature. Like, go be with your nature. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got to tell you, the inside of a, a house or apartment, you got... A couple thousand smells, but once you smelled all those smells, it's got to be like, just like watching right? reruns. <laughs> Barney running up the hill is really funny. Get him! Get him! See, that's the other thing. <laughs> no leash on this guy. Yeah. <laughs> and he's very, he's very good. He's, uh, he mostly listens. It's, yeah. it's been getting better, too, in the last few weeks. I like how he weeks. looks back at you like, you still coming? You still involved? Yeah, I'm coming, bro. You still involved you in my play? You got four fucking legs, and you only weigh 16 pounds. <laughs> it's got to be much easier for him to... <laughs> but, yeah, he's been... He's a, he's quite an adventure dog. I think... So, the story with him is I think he had... Uh, uh, an older person as his caretaker yeah. before me well. and that they uh, <laughs> uh, something changed in their health and so uh -huh. he was at the um, the asylum no the uh, <laughs> the pound yeah with, uh, the quarters it's alright bud <laughs> He's, he'll, he'll, I'll just make a mind yeah, I'll make him mind his own business. Yeah, yeah go, go. I don't want him to uh, 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 hey, go, go, go. Yeah, oh. see? I told you, I told <laughs> you, you to mind your own business. Sorry about mind that. Mind your own business, Barney. <laughs> mind your own business. It's, oh my thank God. you, thank you for protecting me, though. <laughs> I mean, he is. He's he, got grass hanging out of his mouth. Yeah, he's just a wild dog. He's a wild lion. <laughs> Uh, I was talking about Barney. Oh, uh, yeah, so when I first got him, he was very, he had some, like, timid energy. Uh, when I went to do the little meet and greet at the shelter, yeah. he went, like, behind my legs. And I was like, oh, my Aww. God, he wants my protection. <laughs> and he was all covered in dreadlocks. No. Yeah, so he was, he was neglected. He has such beautiful fur. Yeah, and he was... It's he was, sad. Yeah, he's a, he's a handsome boy. And he just looked, I mean, I'll show you the picture sometime, just looked so sad. So, fur so matted. Fur so matted. That's just, there's nothing sadder than that. Yeah. And like <sighs> I said, I think it was an older person who couldn't take care of him anymore. Yeah. And he got neglected. Yeah. And then, uh, uh we immediately took him and got him groomed. I wish and I could take Moo Moo on the trail. What's that? I said, I wish I could take Moo Moo on the trail. <laughs> I mean, I have oh occasionally... Like a cat. Once in a while, I've seen a cat on the trail. Really? Yeah. It, you know, when I get a new cat, I'll I'll start taking her on the trail. <laughs> I mean, there are adventure cats out there. <laughs> you just gotta train them that yeah. way. They gotta be raised that way because it's it is their nature to like want to be out in nature, but they're also very very independent minded. They'll yeah. just like like wander down the hill and 
that's why you get a, a long <laughs> leash like that. Yeah. So ultimately. So have you ever been on this trail? Yeah, yeah, no? I've been on this. I've been on this trail oh, yeah. a lot. Okay. It's so funny. I kind of knew it was called Skyline a yeah. little bit in my head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but because I, you know, I've come at it from both sides. Uh, yeah, we could go all the way to the cemetery over there. We could take it all the way down to Amir's Garden. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't been to the cemetery. I've gone up, up, up as far as it could go. I haven't gone that way on it because you can go like all the way down to the south. This this connects with the, this. Basically, is the main trail of the park. Yeah, it just kind of tapers out and you know divides at this area. Right. But uh, I love when the sunset is out here and like it's it's so pretty. Um, I usually come around sunset, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And uh, one time I saw the moon coming over the horizon. Oh. It was huge. Oh, my God. It was so big. It was, like, the biggest thing I've ever seen. Biggest moon I've ever seen. And, like, people were all stopping to take pictures of it and stuff. It was wild. Super moon. <laughs> hello, It was the hello. Virgo. It was that Virgo moon. How you guys doing? <laughs> Come on, bud. Good boy. That's amazing. Yeah, so like, just the sights up here are really nice. Mm -hmm. I like that it's not that many people. Yeah, this especially this part of the trail. And it's pretty challenging too. Like, we just caught a break, pretty much. This mm -hmm. is like but the then break. Then we gotta get up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's fu it's funny for the uh, podcast. I typically do flat hikes. Oh, really? Yeah, just because the you know. Whatever the the people that I'm hiking with may not necessarily be athletic, but I want to make sure it's a little everything's a little bit of a walk. Yeah, just because I think different things, different ideas come out when you're moving. Yeah, that's a cool reason for sure. I thought about that. I was like, you know, it's definitely like a good idea to be out walking. Yeah, and I get a little restless when I'm sitting there doing podcasts. Too. Yeah, yeah. I'm like oh, I drank sure. all the water. I'm like, <laughs> Like, it's I'm like going to sit here and my body wants to move. I don't know. You're trapped in the fucking studio and they're going to force comedy out of you. <laughs> you can do comedy. Dance! Do it. Do it. <laughs> but yeah, this is like, well, if, if comedy happens, great. <laughs> if not, we at least got to hike it. Uh, right. And I think it's the, 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 it's the most L.A. thing, a podcast while hiking. <laughs> it's like yeah. uh, it, people. I swear to, who did I talk to? There's somebody on one of the, some one Facebook group for dis, uh, for sad comedians. Mm -hmm. uh, she, was, she was talking about whatever dis, disassociating, like disassociation. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I struggle with that. I said, hey, uh, you know, messenger message her. I said, hey, if you wanna talk on the phone, I can tell you the techniques I use, or let's go for a hike. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I. I, uh, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I don't hike. I'm like, what? Get the fuck out in my head. I'm yeah, like, get the fuck is. out of L.A. <laughs> this is what we do. Why? Like, why would you come here and not want to hike? I mean, yeah. I understand there's some Angelinos that have been, you know, living here since they were children. And they're just kind of like over it or whatever. Like, their parents made them hike. They didn't like it. I don't know. Yada, yada. I get it, I guess. It's like uh, it's like people but, that live in the mountains that don't ski. Come on. Right. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, you know, I did grow up here. And I don't surf, but I did try. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. You know, I grew, you know. I, Surfing sounds, I mean, way scarier than hiking. For sure. But I bet you <laughs> you'd be good at it. <laughs> Thanks. I, yeah. I, I'm sure I could learn just like how to do one basic thing. Yeah, surfing, I want to say surfing's easy. It's the overcoming the fear of getting smashed in the face by a wave is the hard part. Well, I can do that without surfing. <laughs> just, just, I've been smashed by waves. Just standing there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, might as well have a board under you. No, oh, I hate were you, were, yeah. were, you, uh, were you Were you athletic at all growing up? No, not really. Oh, okay. My mom forced me into cheerleading when I was really young. and Just to, to do oh, something. I hated it. Well, yeah, it was like, I also picked up violin like a little bit later, but um, it, that was more kind of like my choice. But she really wanted me to be involved with like the preppy sports, and I was like, nah. <laughs> now I feel I had a lot of um, feels like a bit of like I'll just say forced feminization 
I Barney's mean, a little, he could be a little bit of a grump, but. You grumpy. Come on, be he's nice. listening to you. He's listening. Yeah. He's respecting your boundaries, Barney. Be nice. <laughs> okay, bud. Right? You got it, it. It works for him. He gets a little sassy after he gets it done. He's like a little supermodel, right, buddy? Oh, yeah. What's going he, he's on? giving you your space. Oh yeah. He's just intimidated by big dog so he has to you know I, I call it prison rules he has to come out hard <laughs> well, come on bro what are you doing this is my territory you know uh, <laughs> not but, with you know, that haircut he, he, would, <laughs> he would get his ass kicked if this guy decided that it was in the cards for him that day oh right bud good boy that was good you're a good boy Barney I'm gonna get that piece of Yeah, and he's actually he's got the, he's the look of, of like sweet breeds, you know, not like oh, hi. not not t not tough guy breeds. Hey, yeah. yeah, he does. He's even his ears even go a little. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh. What a sweetie pie! You want to keep moving, bud? Uh, good morning. That's the Come on. other reason it's to over. do uh, a hiking. Mike. He starts back at him like, all right, ah. I'm gonna get. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> What? What are we doing? What are we doing? I need to find a stick. I need to find a stick. Right? Right there. Get it. Go get it. Go get a stick. Oh, good stick. Yeah. Is yeah. that your stick? Wait, there's, I thought this was your stick. I thought that was your stick. Get it. Wait, no. Okay, you're going to bite me? Go, yeah, grab it. B Barney, oh, Barney, what's this? Stick. Your friend's got a stick. Look, look right here, bud. He just bit your ankles. Oh yeah, we got a thing. We got a we got a little. Yeah. He's allowed to get maybe a little nips on the ankle when he's like disengaged. <laughs> Just as long as he doesn't nip anybody else, right, bud? Oh. Oh my God. You can lift your dog with a stick. Oh, isn't that amazing? Come on. Oh, sorry. That's all right. You, you missed. What? What about this stick? This stick's a lot bigger than that stick. <laughs> he slides okay, down dork. the hill. Come on, Dork. Get your stick. Come on. Right here. Oh, I <laughs> so I feel like for me, my mom forced me into sports to kind of like as a forced mas masculization kind of thing. Yeah. She had to bro me up. Pretty much same for me. Just like feminization. It sucked. And she would be like, because it was weird because she was raised to always wear dresses and stuff. Her mom tried to do the same thing to her, and my mom didn't want to have, she wasn't having it. She, I, I see pictures of her, like, she's always oh, wearing like, shorts. Just like she's always wearing shorts and t t-shirt, you know. Like, like, why Like why push the same thing on your daughter? It's like, what are you doing? Didn't you learn? You didn't like the feminization either. Why are you doing it to me? I jumped out of the car while I was moving to avoid going to cheerleading. I'm like, I'm not doing this, fuck you. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, go, I was like nine it. years old. <laughs> I was like, I'll show you. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. My mom was like, I'll show you, and she ran me over. <laughs> What's she didn't. I mean, I've had such a complicated issue with, I'll just say masculinity as a, like a base, whatever, gender stereotypation I don't know what the word is yeah. but uh, my mom was uh, worried that I was going to be a fat gay kid <laughs> uh, and you know did you overeat? I was a baker I this I have a, a big traumatic thing from her growing up yeah uh, where and again it was it's her you know manipulations were very subtle yeah but I love baking and I got I started with cooking and then I went to baking I wanted yeah. to have all the stuff around, the thermometer, da da da. Uh -huh. I was very good at it. I was even like, I mean, I figured out like, oh, caramelized means to burn in a certain way. Yeah. I bet you caramel is just sugar cooked until it's uh, caramel, you yeah. know? <laughs> like I did the math in my own head. <clears throat> nice. But then she stopped buying the baking supplies. Huh. She stopped making it so I could have anything to 
to bake with. And uh, I think she was just trying to butch me up. <laughs> and I am pretty butch, despite her, or yeah, maybe because of, I mean, you know, I saw, you saw my big truck. I mean, that's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I did see it. It was a big truck. It was nice. Yeah. It was a good truck. Good job. No, <laughs> no, I did see, uh, like, oh man, what was I going to say? I forgot. Um, but yeah, you're pretty butch, dude. I don't think she had anything to worry about. No, <laughs> well, no but, uh, but again, like, but I was also into like, you know, makeup and her cl- dressing up in her clothes and stuff like that. Yeah. Like a little boy will, would be. Yeah. And I think she was just very, and she told me, those gay guys, they have such difficulty. I, I didn't want you to have to go through that. Huh. I'm like, but also, it's always like, Mom, you're going to give me an opportunity to figure it out myself. Right. Because and it's kind of funny. Your parents think that they have that kind of control. It's like, there's so many, like, outside forces. Like, you can't, like, I'm sorry, but parent, but you just can't control your kid like that no it, it, so you can control the outcome there's so many other things like me and my friends used to play barbies and we would try to get the boys to come and play with us yeah. to like sensitize them we were trying to make gays <laughs> so you got, you got people like us you know out there doing the exact opposite work of your mom like he, you're you, unraveling the who, fucking who's gonna win your parent yeah. or your peers you know, ultimately, I, I think you seek your peers' approval. It's like kind of, uh, it's it's healthy. To uh, yeah. Oh that. yeah. Or you, wait, who's going to win comedy? Because I'm a, 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 a person that's on the other side of it, ex- kind of expressing these ideas. You know. Right. Uh, but I love playing Barbies with my 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 female friends, my lady friends, girlfriends. I don't know what you call. Them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, little girls. Little girls. Uh. <laughs> but but I also you know maybe there was also probably a part of me where I did play with them, maybe a little bit sexually inappropriate. But also I just enjoyed being with the with the. I'm going to say the little girls. It's so wrong. <laughs> but with the women, yeah. and just being able to, like, you know, brush the hair of the Barbie and put them in situations. Because I had yeah. my own dolls to play with. Yeah. Star Trek action figures, Star Wars action figures. Yeah, so yeah. it was like you knew how to do that. It wasn't yeah. like you were learning anything particular. It's just different. It's interesting how boys and girls play different in those situations and, like, also the same. Cause yeah. like I don't know, me and my friends would do the sexual sexual situations all the time, right? And then the boys would come in, and we would try to clean up our act for some <laughs> reason. Like why? <laughs> well, I mean, okay, and but we that, just didn't know what to do. <laughs> that's I mean, that is exactly that's that weird like automatic shame that's <laughs> built into us. Like, yeah, we're very curious about it. Let's make the dolls do it and see what other people have to say. You know, yeah. like you know. I'm like, you know, it's cool if I do make the dolls do that with my cousins, but if I do that with <laughs> Jimmy boy. Bob, then <laughs> he might tell his mom, and I might have taught him something. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my God. We were at that age where, like, you know, you don't know who knows what yet. It's yeah. like, now we know. Everybody knows about sex. We're yeah. old. I mean, the, inter- the internet just brings hot and cold running porn into your house 24 hours a day if you need it. <laughs> yeah. It's all there if you're curious. <laughs> Just take a look, figure out what your search terms are. That's what kind of person you are. That's Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah, I do. Hold on a sec. Hey, bud. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Let's go. Come on. It's a simple leash. <laughs> It's okay, bud. It's okay. All right. Yeah. There you go, bud. Good boy. I mean, that's the best way to approach it. What? If if you're going to be a busybody about having my dog on the leash. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, get it. He he knows that his dog. <laughs> yeah, he's be he's <laughs> he, he like stopped in the middle of the trail. <laughs> We both knew something was up. Yeah. I was like, maybe mask? So I put my mask on. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I mean, anytime (laughs) they have a dog, I know it's exactly what it is. Um, I'm I'm reading the dog owner's body language. 
<laughs> as soon as I see them, just His like stark deer in headlights, look at us. Yeah, <laughs> come on, like you know, like the ladies, with just the, like the dog, <laughs> with the friendly dog. Like they didn't even care. There was the dog no energy there. Dog didn't give a there. shit. Yeah. Dog was whining a little bit. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I heard that. Because I, I, I like, yeah, the dog wants to smell my dog's butthole. <laughs> I mean, come on, why are you why are you <laughs> taking that delicious treat away from him? <laughs> I, I swear, it's got to be great. And Barney's a little bit of an alpha. So other little dogs will just come up and just like lick his dick. Just like, it's so hilarious. I like, it's got to be great. Just you go out, you're a dog, you're naked, and somebody just like randomly licks your dick. Like, oh, yes, that's be, right. That's got to be amazing. Lick upon it. <laughs> yes. And he just, he just kind of takes it. Just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is what you need to do. I mean, I, occasionally I'll see him go go for somebody's dick, and I'm like, yeah, he's, he's got to get his taste in. He's got to like <laughs> reciprocate. But yeah, <laughs> that's, that's again. This is where we mostly learn about sexuality is from watching our animals that's, <laughs> yeah. or playing with dolls. What? Uh, what, did, what? So okay. So what was? What did your parents do? You, you weren't on, raised on a farm because yeah. you were dating. Yeah. No, I was. But I was a pretty suburban kid, but. Um, my parents really didn't do anything. Like we had sex ed. They re- <laughs> they relied on the school to do that. Oh, but what, what, what were you? What, what religion were you raised? Um, Christian mostly, but um, there was no real like practices going oh, on. Oh, you didn't? In our you house. Got, did you go to church? No, we didn't really go to church. Oh, okay. we, we went sometimes, like, like for uh, Christmas or whatever. Or yeah, definitely Easter. for those holidays. We went to a. It's it's now a mega church. Oh, but it used so, to. It, it was a from, mega church before that term came around. From tiny seeds grow. <laughs> <laughs> mega churches. Oh, my mom loves that mega church. It's called Fairhaven, and it's on. Uh, it's in Kettering, which okay. is a suburb of Dayton, and. Uh, yeah, that's like a huge church, and it always was really huge. And I liked going there um, partially because it was kind of scary. Sure, sure. Like, they had this huge organ. Like, it took... Oh, like a real pipe organ? Dude, yeah. Oh, It was fuck, gigantic. Yeah. I mean, it was huge. And I couldn't... I was just like so taken aback by how big this freaking instrument was, I mean, and it, it scared yeah. me. It was Ooh, like... Oh, God, I love this. This is amazing. <laughs> I was like, man, this thing is so creepy. I hate, like, I kind of hate it. And then, like, I also kind of love it, though. Well, that's, but I feel like that's the, that's the, the awe that somebody can get from yeah. a religious experience, especially, yeah. in a, but in a weird way. It's not it was, supposed to be comfortable all the time. Yeah, but also you were, you if it were was, engaging. everybody would be doing it. <laughs> yeah, you were engaging in the steampunk side of uh, Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I feel like, oh, like steampunk this. was great for Christianity. I mean, it was a, it was very like Tim Burton culture. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I uh, so people the get first... dressed up and wear weird hats. And, oh yeah, like, you it's know. a show. Yeah, it is a fucking show. Yeah, and Put the on better makeup the show. And yeah, yeah. You know, like, that's why I feel like those mega churches they put on a fucking good they, show. They do, and like. I don't know. I still watch like I watch a couple of like YouTube spiritual channels. One of them is a very Christian church. It's called Transformation Church. Okay. Guy named Steve Furtick is a pastor. He reminds me of Drake, man. He's just so hip. Yeah. And like attractive, and like he's funny, and I'm just like, man, these guys like you know there's. There's a reason, like, a stand-up comedian like myself will, will enjoy watching that. You know, oh, yeah. it's like, do, yeah, do you, do you he, know, uh, he commands power. It's really cool. Do you know Michael Bernard Beckwith over no. at Agape? Well, once all this shit clears up, we should go <laughs> hit up Agape. But yeah, he definitely is the real deal. He's, he channels. And it's really a, it's really an offshoot of, of new thought and Christian science. Yeah. So there is a, there's hints of Christianity in there. Which I can appreciate. Yeah. But the fact that they're not so Christ focused. Yeah. Is is much better for me, because uh, whatever my religious trauma. Right. Uh, just I think it's like people hit you over the head with these weird ideas about what they think God is, and it's just worse when it's Christianity for me. Right. That's all. Yeah. Uh, definitely like a lot of scriptures that sound. 
were, were like like scary, weird, different, foreign to me. But when you take the scriptures from the Bible and you kind of like translate it, <laughs> you know, like when people do a great job translating it, that's sure. when it's like, oh, and then like, but sometimes I'm still confused. Like, how did you even get that? Sure. <laughs> I'd also say like, I've but been, still I, down. <laughs> yeah, I do a little bit of like, um, you know, whatever. I'll say biblical scholarship for lack of a better term, but I just listened to a book uh, about the lost, the recently found lost text of, uh, gospel of Judas. Yeah. Right. It's a Gnostic text and you get the sense that whatever we have in the modern Bible is definitely, uh, a, uh, an edited tool of the powerful, right? They wanted to make it, you have to access God through them where the Gnostics and why, hence this being a Gnostic text, Jesus was talking about, you know, the kingdom of heaven within each of us, you know what I mean? And so it's like, you didn't need a priest to tell you how to get to heaven. You just had to find it yourself. Right. And so the Catholic church, they were like, oh, we need to make it not so easy for them to, to find God. (laughs) (laughs) And we got to make sure that there's no ladies involved. (laughs) We can't give them any power. (laughs) <laughs> so that's the thing. That's the problem I have mo- with the with most of the text of the Bible is it's a it's basically just a patriarchal text. You know, yeah. they really have structured it in a way. It's yeah. okay, bud. See, it's I okay, guys. Even, I don't even know. I'm like, you know, half of it don't even make sense oh, to me sure. when I read it. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm very like I'm modern. You know, yeah. I don't I don't, don't want to have to spend all day trying to decipher what the heck is. <laughs> well, you then then you'll super dig. Like, I don't like old. I don't like old text i don't like to think that hard you know i yeah. just i just want to read the message i just want to know the message i yeah. don't want to spend hours poetically trying to figure it out <laughs> no no I, I this is one of the reasons why i dig dr beckwith so much is because he is he's approaching it from like like a, a lot of spiritual practices he's got some buddhism in there yeah he's, he will you know kind of quote take some quotes from the quran it, it's good that there's people who are still willing to do that work and are still like yeah. taking the old text like you know i'm not saying like this old text is bullshit we need to start our own like well i really like well. i like a lot of the, well <laughs> <laughs> i mean I think that's what comedy so, I, is. I mean, a mix. A mix, I think, needs to happen. You know, like, Sure, sure. But I think that's what comedy is. is like you're starting your own one-person cult. Uh, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> Where you have to get out there and you got to get a few people to throw, throw, some, throw some dollars in the hat. And you're like, da-da-da-da. Yeah. Or, or I, I just had this idea. Because I think the, the, the great spiritual teachers were like channels, right? Yeah. So... Basically, like as a as a comedian, you're letting them witness you channeling this energy, yeah. right? So yeah, they gotta fucking pay. <laughs> <laughs> you, I got, I, I'm gonna go dance up here like a fool. Give me money. Yeah, yeah, but that's. What, I mean, plus we're. I feel like there's also the the whole like trauma that we've dealt with, and we're like helping them with their trauma by helping ourselves with yeah, our trauma. Yeah. By oh, doing oh absolutely. Comedy. It's like we're a conduit <laughs> no, well, it, of it, like audience traumas. And if they don't even like say somebody thinks they're like perfectly normal and don't have any traumas, like it's still just fucking bottom line entertainment for them. But like a lot of people do have mm-hmm. traumatic experiences. Why That's why they seek comedy yeah. and like, yeah. So yeah, I agree. It's the, the stage. We, we laugh. We laugh about things that are horrible. A lot of times it's like displaced. Uh, it's like a displaced <laughs> emotions. Yeah. And it's like the most appropriate place to do that at is without a comedy show, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a, it's true. I, I mean, I, <clears throat> the only thing I'd wish, and maybe this is where I need to develop myself as a, as an artist. Damn, there's a sea pass out. Oh wow, are we at the beginning? No, no we're at the, the the other road that passes. This. So there's, we got the oh, okay. the road that passes that way, and then there's a road that goes down the middle. Okay. Cool. So we're at that, and we can we'll just we can just cross across it and then get to the uh, the next section of the park. Um, but uh, you know, I, th- I think the only thing I mean, I love making people laugh, but mm-hmm. I want to be in a position to be able to to really like move people maybe get them to to think or cry or and then also laugh you know but that's also longer pieces it's hard to right. it's hard to get that get to that in 10 minutes 
make people laugh and cry in 10 minutes. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, man, that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so people tend to just come out there to, for their one specific drug. Well, I mean, alcohol and laughter. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's, a, that's, that's interesting because I think that like, um, I went to a very sweet, uh, Christian church in Long Beach growing mm-hmm. up and I didn't have, like, it wasn't necessarily that church itself that gave me the trauma. And we, oh, there are, the reason I mentioned it is we had a pipe organ in the original church. Oh, cool. It was amazing. And when the city of Los Angeles did some eminent domain, our city of Long Beach did some eminent domain on our property, we had to dismantle the pipe organ. And it was, it just sat in storage. I don't know whatever happened to it, but it was just like such a shame that they, they wanted to build basically the crappiest mall in all of LA Mm -hmm. Uh, it was was like oh great you destroyed our church for fucking commerce Mm -hmm. but uh yeah they but that pipe organ I just remember it just it was in the center of the of the church and it was just oh my god yeah so all right do you want to head back towards the car yeah, yeah, yeah okay it's perfect perfect timing um yeah, organs are creepy. <laughs> there is actually in, I want to say Panorama City, uh, I went and saw a, um, it was like a, oh, it was uh, Phantom of the Opera, like the silent movie, mm-hmm. and it was accompanied by the pipe organ, and literally the room we were inside was just a gigantic pipe organ. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. Huh. It was and they had like you ever seen those kind of pipe organs that will like play drums and stuff? Uh, maybe, yeah. I don't know. Maybe an Tim and Eric episode. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like a. It was almost like not robots, but like steampunk fucking auto, automatic uh, instruments. Yeah. Whew. Oh no! Now we gotta be, go back yeah. up this hill. I was like, maybe not, we don't go down this hill, but I didn't want to say anything. Uh. <laughs> it's not that bad. And you should have said something. I'm always nah. willing to go harder than most people. <laughs> I just had a late night last night with yeah. all that but boozing with those renegades. Fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. Um, it's not that often I treat myself to that much liquor, but. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, they had whiskey. And damn it, I didn't live on the border of Kentucky for no reason. <laughs> that's where the whiskey's cheap <laughs> oh yeah and they got the real the best stuff they have good stuff but uh i mean scotland has good stuff too i like scotch i used to work at a piano bar in chicago it's a scotch and cigar bar oh fun and yeah people got really nice quality this you know people would be ordering johnny walker blue oh shit that's that expensive shit. Yes. Shit's like $45 a glass. Woo! <laughs> what about an Islay and uh, Lafrogues? Oh, Lafroig. Yeah. Lafroig. Yeah, Lafroig is good. Scapa. It's one that I like. Oh, uh, yeah. It was my favorite because it had a little picture of a sea boat on it. <laughs> I mean, you know. And it was really salty. Ah, that's it was like what it was. one of those peaty. Yeah ones i like that shit clears out your sinuses uh, yeah and i miss working there in chicago sometimes it wasn't very a uh, healthy lifestyle though because it was a 5 a.m bar Woo! so i would be getting off of work when the sun came up oh my <laughs> god smoke and whiskey and that, yeah. that'll 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 uh that's a the city life right there bam it was always yeah it was i was like I was like, I think this is as Chicago as the shit gets right here. Yeah. Like Al Capone used to frequent that bar. We yeah. had we had playmate uh, Jenny McCarthy come in there all the time. Uh, original Playboy Mansion was in Chicago. Oh yeah, that's right, right across the street from where ah. I worked. And you know, it didn't stay there long. It needed the glamour and glitz of Hollywood. Yep. I don't I don't blame them. Yep. <laughs> but uh yeah, man. So nice. One time I sold a $1,000 bottle of champagne. Fuck yeah. It's like Dom Perignon Rosé. 
and we had to serve strawberries and whipped cream and all that stuff every time we sold it. But I remember they were doing a bonus special for if any waitresses sold a bottle of Veuve Clicquot. And I was like, yo, what about a bonus special for me selling this $1,000 bottle of champagne? Yeah. And they were like, hell yeah, we'll give you a bonus. But it wasn't as big as the other bonus. Uh, <laughs> I was a little irritated. I'm like, dude, Veuve Clicquot, it's like, it's like 40 bucks a bottle here. Like, and you charge Veuve ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> I just made your bar $1,000. <laughs> They were giving, like, $50 rewards to people who sold, like, 10 bottles of Vouve, I think. Yeah. Or five bottles, something like that. They were giving, they gave me, like, 20 bucks for that one. I'm like, man, $1,000, that's way more than five bottles worth of Vouve, man. (laughs) This is what, this is. uh, It's my hustle. (laughs) Yeah, but I tell you, this is why you're an independent, uh, you're a contractor out there. Right. You're whittling your comedy out of nothing <laughs> so you can yeah, charge man. for it what you... What oh, you... I used to do the Laugh Factory, and I would put on a disguise after I did Laugh Factory. I would put my hair up, put a bunch of makeup on, and put on glasses before I went into the Redhead. Because I knew customers would trickle in from the Laugh Factory. I didn't want them to recognize me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was just like, you know, you guys have got enough out of me for one night. <laughs> I didn't want to entertain them after I already entertained them. I don't know. (laughs) Well, also, I think that uh, dude energy is relentless. Dude energy is... Dude, I've had all kinds of dude fingers in my hair. Uh, I'm like, you want to lose a finger? That's a good way to do it. You should put some traps in there. (laughs) I could hide shit in here. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing about, like... Let's say Women's po- fingers too, lady. Oh, sure. Everybody, lady everybody fingers. wants to. Everybody wants to touch the the alien. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? It's just so. And I was sassy with them, man. I would tell them. I'd be like, if you want to lose a finger, keep touching my hair. I would just tell them, and they always thought it was funny. Whatever. Everything was a big joke. I'd come. Kind of, I'd tell straight haired women. I'd be like, your hair. You need a hairbrush for the back. Like yeah. I would just say shit to them. <laughs> If they said something like, oh, your hair is pretty, I'd be like, yeah, you need a brush. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't, Fucking do it. But they they loved it. It's like they wanted to be insulted. I, I never got into roasting in comedy. Well, you, you, but at you, the you, Redhead, you, yeah. it's fucking roast battle every day with those customers. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of didn't want their money. I was like, <laughs> you know, like I kind of didn't. You know, I was like, well, at the time I had been uh, donated a large sum. <laughs> By nice. a friend. He, nice. was, he was homeless. He was a comedian. I became friends with him. And then his dad died. And he inherited millions of dollars. So he had a few, like, younger comedian girlfriends he just, like, gave money to. Boom. Bought my car. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. I wrecked it. Uh. I didn't wreck it on purpose. Like, I got in a four-car pileup in L.A. Oh, shit. I was, like, so pissed. I was the third one in line. And, like, I just, like, got all this responsibility for all the... I was, like... Like, 100% responsible for all this shit. Oh. I was like, damn, I should have got a lawyer sooner. Sure. I, I could have got one sooner, probably, if I had jumped on it before. I didn't I didn't realize. I was so naive. Like they, were, people, they were basically looking for the patsy. They want, yeah. 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 They're like, oh, yeah, this girl. Yeah. Definitely this girl. This, this sweet girl from Ohio. She's the one. With this. No, I'm like, what about the freaking couple that was like, there was a, well, what happened was uh, there was a couple in the front of line who had just gotten into a wreck. Yeah. And then they were p- trying to pull away from that wreck. And, then and they were going the too slow and they caused another yeah. one. Oh, and yeah. it, like four of us got involved. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's ultimately, oh. here's the thing. It's ultimately <laughs> with that stuff and it sucks, uh, but it's the, 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 the lawyer that wins. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a, I'll tell you, as a scammer myself, uh, <laughs> I will always approach these situations, you know, just uh-huh. license and, 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 uh, uh-huh. and insurance uh-huh. and contact their insurance and just be like, look, mm-hmm. you know, it's a shame that California is not a no fault state, but you're, this is, this is the limit of my policy. Right. You can, you can talk Take to my limit. insurance agent, you let them battle out because really ultimately did, I mean, did the, was there a judgment against you? Yeah. Yeah, oh. they said I was 100% at fault for the 
rear end damages of the car in front of me and 100% at fault for the front end damages of the car in front of me. Meaning that you the car in front of me, it. yeah, they said they pushed it, which is bullshit. Sure, sure, sure. But Complete got- bullshit. And then they said I was uh, like 50% at fault for the bumper that was in front of the car in front of me. <laughs> and then like, um, that's when I was like, whoa, okay. I had one little cut on my leg from the, mm-hmm. from the thing. I mm-hmm. was like, I wasn't going to say shit about that cut. But then I realized everybody started picking and picking and taking. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? All right, I'm going to file a claim for the guy behind me who hit me. Yeah. Get Try to get some compensation for my cut. Yeah. Well, these lawyers are calling me. How much do you want for that? Because my client has $30,000 in medical bills. I'm like, really? Because when we were in an accident, her head was still on her shoulders. So yeah. I'm like, like, they all said they were fine. I was the only one who had a cut. So I said, uh, he said, how much do you want? And I said, $10,000. And he was like, no way. You're not getting that. And I'm like, all right, fine, 5000 And he was like, well, how much were your bills? And I'm like, I'm not telling you. He was like, fine. And then he called my insurance tried to get uh the summation of my bills and they called me like hey this lawyer wants to know what your bills were i'm like don't tell him and they're like okay and then <laughs> and then he was like he was like we'll settle for three thousand i was like tell him four thousand and we'll settle it and then he settled for four thousand i got the bill i was like can you send me a copy of that bill by the way just so i know it's like 230 dollars <laughs> No, that's that's. So I mean, but I, I got you, a little something. Yeah, but I tell you that is that's those are some great negotiating skills. I'm, I didn't think anything would come of me not showing him the bill. I was like, whatever. He'll probably like get a copy. I, I'll just tell you if whatever. you just look at the the leadership we've had in this country for the last few <laughs> years. The, you, I mean, it's it's you know, you and I were probably trained to be nice people. Yeah. Straightforward, kind people. Yeah. And. You know, this when it city, comes this fucking LA just hardens you, man. Well, that's for sure. But but <laughs> I I but I've also I find that I only have to get my knives out when I need to get my knives out. Yeah. You know, some but people I, got them out all the time. No, they're ready. They're ready for that. But I, you know, it's <laughs> like I'm a I'm a very good judge of character. So yeah. I uh, I can I can see I can assess a situation from miles away. Right. Uh, I just got rid of a. You know, a not great roommate. Yeah. And he was, you know, uh, he got in. Uh, that shows you the scar, right? Oh, wow. What happened there? I had uh, open heart surgery and they removed my kidney. How long ago? That was a year ago last December. Oh, wow. So he got in when I was still recovering from my surgery. So I was in a weakened state. Okay. I could not read him. But okay. he took this year and he didn't fucking do anything with his life and he spent his money like crazy. Uh-huh. So when I, it was time for me to tell him to move out, mm-hmm. he made a big stink about it. Yeah. He's like, I don't have anything. I had to give him a thousand bucks. What? Really? It's fine. Worth it. Worth it. Yeah. To get him the fuck out of there. He was just God, a bummer. He's an alcoholic and a bummer. You had to give him a fucking thousand bucks. I mean, yeah, he has a disease. Yeah. And he has a disease. He has a disease. And like, yeah, the thousand bucks. To get to not be around a sick person. Yeah, great. when you're already like what? when you're like trying to heal yourself. Oh yeah, but again, like at the time when he got in there, get it? No, he's scared. He don't want to go to the edge. <laughs> oh no, he'll go over the edge. He's he just wants to pester me. Right, right, right. <laughs> okay, you ready? You ready? Go get it. He's actually a pretty brave little dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's gotten into it with. Coyotes, yeah, bucks, yeah. He's a. It surprises me every time <laughs> how uh, how he'll just go for it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> never go to a second location with a coyote. You know what they say. <laughs> okay, my cat go. ran off another cat the other night. Kind of scared me because I don't want her. Get, I don't want her getting in cat fights because they can fuck each other up they could but they're 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 usually it's usually just an elaborate dance yeah you know especially if that's if it's your cat's neighborhood the other one's not gonna hurt it was my yeah it was like our it was like our house yeah Yeah. so this cat was like definitely the intruder so he left yeah but i'm like moo moo don't kill him like (laughs) she's scary when she gets like and she uh she was wanting to make friends with a possum um it's really cute. Like, I've been trying to feed, like, birds to 
train her to like catch birds and stuff because she's never really had that Aww. experience and i'm like you but then it attracted possums at night with having the... that bird seed out and they like that they'll eat that and uh <laughs> oh yeah of course <laughs> and moo moo goes out and she doesn't hiss at the possum she's cool with the possum the possum's scared to death of her but he just like st- stood still but she came out, she saw he him, possum. and was like... He played possum. He played possum, as you do. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> it was so cute. And then she rolled on her back and was like, oh, touch my tummy. I'm like, Moo Moo, he's scared. Aww. And she wanted to be friends with the possum. I'm like, how do I facilitate this? I like this. No, it's like a, <laughs> it's like a, 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 a like a, um, what's the... The word I'm looking for, like a corrupted Disney movie. <laughs> the house cat and the possum. Yep. I brought you some garbage, yep. lady. You guys want to share a bowl of spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I get them to both, like, hang out? Uh, I mean, you know, bird seed for the possum, but also find a treat they both like. Probably, yeah. yeah. Like a bowl of milk. Yeah. I'm sure a possum would like that. D- you know, possums are really spitty. They are very <laughs> spitty. But I found them to be actually very sweet, even though they're so ugly. So cute. Yeah, yeah, they're really cool. I actually really enjoy possums. Yeah. I used to be really, yeah, they're ugly. So people, like, judge. Yeah. But they're, uh, I guess, they're <laughs> keeping us safe from the tick population in L.A. They're safe from the tick No, population. so they eat, they eat, they eat ticks. thousands of ticks. Oh, wow. They are the... It's interesting. You know, they're like the inner, they, I forget, it's like an intermediate species that is a barrier between humans and other things. So they, eat the, they eat the ticks. Interesting. Keeping us safe. That's why you can't get rid of all the possums. You know. It's that's a lot, cool. But that's also why we got COVID is because of the intermediate species between whatever, the SARS, COVID-19, and mm-hmm. humans, they got, like, eliminated. So it was like, oh, we can go straight to the humans now. <laughs> hmm. We're going to fuck you guys up. <laughs> but, yeah. Interesting. This is why biodiversity, important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, I think it this way. So they eat ticks. So they probably don't have ticks. No. <laughs> uh, they're, they're tick resistant or whatever. Huh. I yeah, I usually go up there, but that's going to be, I'm getting Yeah, I think you're, you're, you're getting beat. Go yeah, yeah. I think we put in, I think we've definitely done, uh, even up to this point, we've done a podcast worth of hiking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is just bonus material. Right. Uh, this is the DVD extras. But also, <laughs> if somebody actually stayed this long, this is the, this is what they get. <laughs> yeah. Is the, Do you upload just like the whole thing, or you yeah, go in I, and cut? I try, I try not to edit, because partially because oh, cool. the ambient noise of being on the hike, you know, yeah. it's it's a little bit of an impossible. Oh, it's uh, weird to cut that. Yeah. 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 But but also I like I, I like the idea that it's like they're on a hike with us. Yeah. You know, they can put it on, and if they want to go for an hour and a half hike, they got an hour and a half podcast to listen to. Nice. Yeah. But it's, I'm doing a rebrand. Oh, yeah. So it's called the Luck Club now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I when I view your what's going on with your career from a distance, you seem like you got some pretty good luck going on. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've had some streaks, like some winning streaks. Um, right now, I'm not in a winning streak, it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> the, the whole world is not in a winning streak, but, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you could say that, but there were times during COVID where I felt like I was winning for a while. Okay. And then, like, you know, it it was just very, like, up and down, up and down, like a roller coaster. Yeah. It was like I lost my job as an ice sculptor because all the parties were not allowed and, you know, people weren't ordering ice sculptures. Yeah. And that I was, where I was able to do that as a full-time job before, or at least part-time. Not necessarily. Well, I was working like 20, 20 hours a week, 25 hours a and week. And it's a probably pretty decently paying job because it's a yeah. very specific kind of thing. So you're yeah, able not, to at yeah. least make your basic ends meet from that job. Anything else is bonus acting or yeah. whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, but then, so, like, I lost that job, and then my roommate left, and I had to move out of my apartment, but I had too much stuff, so I had to sell everything I owned. <laughs> like, you know, so I, I, like, you know, got a little money from selling the stuff, but then, you know, I had to, like, also rebuy that stuff, you know, once yeah, I got yeah, my yeah. own place. Yeah, I had yeah. to rebuy a lot of shit. I couldn't afford to really store it, because it's, like, $400 a month for a 5 by 5 square inch space. And not everything's like, going to fit in there anyways. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, not everything's going to fit. So, um... So that was like, fuck, man. I moved to San Diego. I was living in my friend's spare bedroom for a while. Got my act together. Got a bunch of auditions through self-taping. And I had, like, a little winning streak there where I was, uh, I got hired to do um, a thing for Clash of Clans, which is a very popular video game Mm -hmm. with Supercell. They're from Norway or Finland. And, uh fucking that was like paying out the ass like the highest paying job i ever had and then they canceled it like the day before we were supposed to do the live stream Uh. and so and then like that kind of started like you know this spiral of me keep getting called back call back call back call back not hired not hired not hired i'm like oh like how do i jump back on (laughs) i was getting some jobs there for that wasn't the only one um, I've noticed I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of work as, like, the boss lady in the blazer. Oh, nice. And that's, like... Go. That's, like, the trope now for me. Oh, good. Stern, hard, boss lady, comedic, comedic, comedic executive. Comedic, hard ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Deadpan. Like, they want that kind of stuff. And And uh, I've had to wear a fake mustache twice for auditions. They also want, like, cross-dressers. Fuck yeah. I'm noticing, like, trends. I've been on so many auditions. You know, I'm noticing, like, the trends of people, what what kind of, what what type of acting they want, like, what type of wardrobe, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, God, all that kind of stuff. It's just interesting. No, it's a, that's a great way to look at it. I have not... When you do too much of that work... Hey, stop. Oh, my God. That was too much. You too can chase much. that. It's too much. Go, go, go. When you do Excuse too go. much of that work, <laughs> um, it like burdens your soul man it's yeah. just like reading somebody else's copy so trying to sell somebody else's product yep. and i realized how essential stand-up really was yeah and not only for me but for audience members live yes. live stand-up yes I'm not talking about zoom I'm, I'm okay with doing zoom shows but i'm not okay with the audience watching zoom shows mm, yeah. i don't think it's fun for them as fun as a real show it's never going to be as fun. i don't know yeah <laughs> i just I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'm ready to jump back into the stand-up pool. Yeah. This acting crap is, like, very, yeah. They, well, did, there's I a did, reason why this is a place where dreams go to die. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I did want to ask, because you've been, you've been mentioning in your stories about <laughs> people calling you Jim Carrey. Oh, yeah. Yes. Now, what would, if, if you had the perfect project... Uh, what would what would that acting job be? Because you're you're funny. Why not start aiming yourself in the direction to figure out what that is, like the well, like as a movie or a TV show or something. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of working on something right now. Oh, good. Um, yeah, it's called state mandated stand up. Yeah. <laughs> and so basically, like my character is a comedian before the pandemic. Like she's kind of got small luck, you know. Just it's me. Yeah, like yeah, I've got a bunch of best, small luck best going. Way like, to write, the best place to write like from. little thing, a bunch of little coins in there, like trying to catch them. And then like uh, the pandemic happens, and I get into like a drunk driving accident or something like that. It like ruins everything, and I have to go to court court's like what do you do for a living i'm like i'm a stand-up comedian and he's like all right well instead of just putting you in jail we're here not going to do any good for the world how about you take your stand-up comedy skills and teach group therapy sessions at the psych ward and teach group therapy on how to do stand-up to help them with their problems (laughs) fuck yeah so then yeah that's pretty much it like my character goes and uh teaches you know does like once a week or once a day like kind of group therapy sessions where you know we do fun exercises like list the 10 worst things that's ever you've ever experienced or like (laughs) all right (laughs) 
So uh, and everybody's like, we don't want to do this. This is stupid. And I have to like connect with these folks. <laughs> so do you see it as a, like a series or a movie? I think I see it as a movie. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, Cause I could see it being both. Yeah. I could also see like, so it's so interesting because it's like, it's such an easy, easy to be easily formatable idea. Right. Right. You just maybe have to have either co- like a couple, couple uh, other characters, obviously, if it's a, a TV series, and maybe yeah. in this this kind of dystopic world that you've created, because <laughs> yeah. the, the idea, like, it's almost like it could be taking place in a world that is a little, a little more state oriented yeah. than we than the one we're living in. Yeah. So maybe there's a lot of state uh, mandated. Uh, employees out there maybe there's a lot of state mandated like a state mandated chef or whatever you know what I mean yeah yeah and maybe you guys are like you got a whatever a group you got your own bitch stash about it I don't know I don't know I'm just (laughs) saying like to to expand the world but I think as just shooting it as a let's say pilot presentation whatever that means yeah you know whatever you could definitely get to that idea in two to three minutes yeah and just have it out there as you know, and again, depending on who you're pitching it to, you could be pitching it as a feature, or you could be pitching it as a series, or as a web series. But but if you just put together that, then it's your. Then it's also like you're marking your territory. Yeah. To to so if anybody else comes along later on, then you could be like, no, that. But it also, it's so. Yeah. It's so unique to your voice, because you know you just told me about your car accident. Yeah. And yeah. How, having to deal with that and. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a conglomeration of a lot of the, well, I went to the psych ward and like, so Oh shit! When I noticed some, like, it felt like something was missing. Like I, I noticed we were doing a lot of like group exercises and you know, we have people that are like at different levels there, so they can't really delve into anything that's like too hard. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's I, people who are wearing, wearing helmets and shit and kissing the walls and so, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that, but that's also, I mean, in a weird way, that's is the insensitivity of the the medical industrial complex that we're living in right now yeah it's like yeah you probably just needed somebody to be like hey it's probably gonna be need okay to talk to you. Yeah, yeah i'm like well yeah i felt like these people were like under serviced in a way oh, or yeah. oh, like absolutely. or i could see it coming because i was very fresh and new yeah where some of these people have been there for months yeah and like i'm like you know, all we're we're doing things where like our group sessions were like, okay, we're gonna dance to Katy Perry. Oh my god, I remember this one song that was really popular by Katy Perry at the time. It was like uh, it's called "Chained Chained to the Rhythm." Uh, so oh comfortable god. we're living in a bubble, bubble. So comfortable you cannot see the trouble, trouble. And I'm like, what? Yes, <laughs> she's she speaking, ar- narrating my life. Yeah, she's speaking from inside the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do we have to dance to this song? Like, this is too real. <laughs> that's amazing. Chain to the rhythm. But also, that's that's a scene you need to put in your the, whatever pilot presentation yeah. you have, you know? Because, again, it's like, uh, I don't know, the, those those moments ring so true. Um, I wanted to ask. Oh, so I saw there was a movie last night called Stardust, which is basically about David Bowie's transformation from just being David Bowie to being uh, Ziggy Stardust. Yeah. And one of the scenes is about his his brother who has schizophrenia is in uh, an institution and they're doing um, drama therapy. Yeah. And he you know, it's like he he comes up with the idea of being an alien uh, you know rock god watching his brother sing in this drama therapy class. So I think it's a, you're on you're definitely on to uh, you know, there's a lot of therapeutic modalities that are that. Yeah. But I, also the idea that you're, you know, in a weird way, kind of going and rescuing yourself from the institution. Right? right. If you going there, if you're state ordered, maybe there's a girl in the institution. Right. That is a version of you. Right. You know, that you're like, here's the secret to the universe. You know. Right. Here it is. Um, that's and then amazing. I, and then that's I see a... her, yeah, and then I see her in the street one day, or see her like doing an open mic. Yeah, I mean that could just be the 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 whatever. If it's a feature, that's the 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 main arc. But yeah, right. but, but the idea that it's that it's uh, 
you're oh man that is a actually it's 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 so touching but it's got you know obviously you want to have real comedy in it <laughs> you know, yeah. for sure um, i i'm like at a point where i'm like just for the idea i don't really care if there's a whole bunch of comedy in there but oh. i believe that it will just yeah come sure sure i also i also think uh kind of approaching the idea as you know almost like this catharsis uh experience right that you yeah. that you had you're having catharsis through uh comedy and that you know whatever your character can help create that catharsis for other people because yeah. that's what therapy ultimately is right you want to have a cathartic experience to not have to feel the same way. That's why fucking mushrooms are so great. Because you right. can create a, an artificial catharsis. <laughs> not artificial. <laughs> yeah, but, but you you're... could just like force it to happen. Like brain, do it. Yeah. Do it now. This is what we're doing. <laughs> we're, we're, oh. we're, oh. Hey bud, come here. Oh yeah, he's very good. He does love the horses though. He loves the, sm <laughs> he's like in love right now. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> he is so in love with the horses. Right, buddy? Look at them. They're, they're big, sexy ladies. <laughs> there you go, bud. Yeah, those are the big Dabras. Big Dabra step on you. Yeah. Just like it, he, when, he was, when we first introduced him to the idea of horses coming out on the trail, he would just roll around in the horse poop, just like, oh, my, oh God. my God. And then also there were spots that he'd roll around and I was like oh that must be horse pee uh, in that spot right damn there it. which is it's fine it's like at least with horse poop smell or even pee smell it's not he doesn't it's not that bad he's got the kind of fur that it doesn't stick to so it's not like that's good I'm not dealing with it you know for the rest of the day but that's good he's yeah. got it he's got a real kink <laughs> he's got a real he rolling loves rolling in that horse excrement yeah no that's a that is a beautiful idea oh thank you I, I thank love you. it that's I, I think it's either uh, that or I do a film where I'm an ice sculptor and I take all the dead body COVID patients because there's so many and they didn't have p proper funerals. So I go steal them and make ice sculptures out of their bodies. I mean, I think that so I think I, I think those. I think keep both of those in mind. <laughs> I think, I think that, again, like I, I, you know, you, you met, uh, Jim Carrey is uh, kind of the, the patron saint on some levels. He's, he has laid a map for yeah. many of us comedic performers. Because yeah. as much as I love stand-up, yeah. I love fucking TV and film, too. And I don't, you know, it's yeah. like I want to, you know, there's... The f TV and film, TV is what got me here. Because yeah. I always, I, TV was just on. We just had TV and yeah. it was very accessible. It made comedy very accessible to me. Yeah. Like just regular TV shows, oh, sit and, sitcom, comedy. Sitcom. And also, like, I didn't so, put this together until I was too old to have figured this out but i was like oh this is these people's job you know what i mean <laughs> but not and not just the actors i mean the actors i probably knew that oh this is their job but the directors and the writers and the producers all the people that are yeah, behind it's the like scenes they're nine to five yeah they just show up so they're like off they punch in they punch out and yeah. they don't they don't care outside of it <laughs> yeah show up right everybody wants jokes, a piece go probably. home yeah <laughs> it's just the job you're just working in the joke mines yeah yeah which is fine, ultimately. Hey, buddy, come here. Come here. Let's go one more. Get out one more before we get back to the car. Oh. <laughs> good boy. God, you're such a good boy, Barney. Come on. Yep, he's a little bit too curious of those guys. Yeah. They would have right beat there. you up, though, bud. Curious and mysterious. They would have beat you up. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, working on a thing right now called Space Circus, which is uh -huh. definitely right up my alley. It's just a cartoon oh, cool. about a kid that gets kidnapped by clowns, space clowns. Great. And he has to figure out how, how to get back to Earth. It's a story <laughs> of my life. <laughs> uh, a true story. Yeah, that I, I got a bunch of like weird little, like I have one called uh, like Pets and Other Filthy Beasts, and it's you know, 20 years after the aliens in invade, yeah. humans are pets. And it's kind of yeah. dealing with the, like, how do we, how do, how good of pets are we? What's it like to be a stray? 
What do you got going on, bud? Good boy. Uh, I, uh, what's the, what is the other one? Again, like, it's, I'm, I'm now at a point, though, it's like, oh, I only want to put myself in whatever it is I'm writing. Like, yeah. it's got to be about me, because whatever, I know what I can do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you should, it's a smart place to start with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to do I'm going to just throw you on real quick for, for everyone's safety, bud. Right? Wow. Right? Oh, everybody loves your haircut, Barney. The lion. The lion. <laughs> and he's What's, for... What's uh, your dog Barney? Barney? What do you got? Uh, Duke and Berkeley. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if it's like <laughs> no, he he got he got the Barney. Uh, it was at the. I mean, I could have changed it probably, but it was at the uh, the pound. They told told me his name was Barney. Uh, but yeah, then I discovered that I could do the lion cut. I was like, fuck yeah! You want to go, bud? Okay, good. Bye, Duke and Berkeley. Oh, you're These good. Are two expensive colleges for two expensive dogs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But I also feel like Duke Berkeley is a, is a, is a, a landed gentry in in <laughs> jolly old England. <laughs> yeah, so I also feel not obligated to drop an F bomb, but uh, if somebody comes up to me on the road, yeah. I'm not going to keep it clean. I'm yeah. just like, hey, you're in nature. You yeah. never know what you're going to get. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's also Welcome to the world. Hey, what are you eating? For hey. people say fuck at any given moment. Yeah, come on, get out of here. Get, no, no, go, go, go. Um, he loves that grass. Oh yeah, that's good for him, right? What are you doing, don't bur- Bernie? You just, just cut that guy off. <laughs> I do love it when he does stuff like that, though. That's so funny. Everybody's got their own shit going <laughs> on, and the Bernie's like da 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 da. Throwing off your day. <laughs> He does it. I mean, I think he does it on purpose, but that's a whole. Uh, 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 I think he does too. My cat does it to me on purpose. She yeah. walks right in front of me to get my attention yeah. all the time. Yeah. And I, dude, sometimes I just like give her a light kick. You know, ah. like if you walk in front of me, I might we're, kick you. We're sharing this space, bitch. Not everybody <laughs> is gonna just stop. You know, not everybody's gonna not step on your tail <laughs> when you're just like laying in the middle of the floor all day. All day. I mean, he's, you know, again, I think he does it because it's like a little bit of a, like he's a little dog and I think he's got a little bit of an intimidation factor in him. Yeah. And I want him to have it. Like, I would never want him to be, I'll just, I mean, it's not a very PC term, but like a pussy dog. Yeah. You know, I'd never want him to be like afraid of anything. Yeah. Because I think those are those things you build, like that get built into animals that then yeah. turns into fucking cancer or whatever, you know, like. Yeah. I want my dog to have his own... To feel real confident. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, like yeah. humans. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. But, oh, man. Oh, just, yeah. Just let him do it. So I was, <laughs> I was going to say, like, fucking taking the hit on the ice job. And now you're oh, yeah. back. It's back in... Yeah. Now it's back, kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's still pretty... It's still, like, black market ice sculpture. Sure, it's sure. Like, People are having parties and they're not like wanting to really advertise that, yeah. you know, so they're not really happening that often, but yeah. they're still getting them like commercials, definitely still getting them to no avail. They don't give a shit. Yeah. They're like, give us an ice sculpture now. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you know, good. Make it with or with my, without the mask on. We don't care. Just give us our shit. Yeah. Which, you know, these are the, the weird, um, like elements that capitalism creates yeah. <laughs> like we need ice sculptures now, yeah so many <laughs> where did, where did you learn to do this uh i learned here oh, okay i kind of conned my way into the job of course That's i told them i knew job. everything and i feel like they knew i was lying but they're like if she's crazy enough to just tell us she knows everything maybe she's the person for the yeah. job <laughs> and you're, I, I, you strike me as the kind of person that... And I did not not know anything. Like, I did go to the art school and was in this... Uh, I did a toy sculpture for a while before okay. that. So I know form. And yeah, I yeah, was yeah. able to talk to Gavin, the one who actually makes the sculptures. He was at the interview. 
and he was like, okay, so you know form, you went to art school, you know, you've used a chainsaw. Yeah. You And I also used to apprentice at a place who did ice sculptures in Chicago. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, So enough. I did know, like, enough. Yeah. yeah. But I, I went in there totally, like, guns blaring, just like, yeah, I know how to do this. Day. I used to sculpt at the zoo. I made SpongeBob, dolphins, you name it. <laughs> it's just, like, bullshitting. <laughs> Oh, but I couldn't believe it. I got the job. I couldn't fucking believe it. Well, I and mean, I kept working around, dicking around at this vegan restaurant for a while. And this ve- these vegans were like, "You're gonna quit?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I gotta make all these ice sculptures." Like Oprah Winfrey can't fucking wait any longer. <laughs> Kim Kardashian keeps having babies. Like I, I'm busy. Yeah, <laughs> like, fuck I gotta yeah. go. And they like they couldn't believe it. They're like, "I can't believe you." Like actually can make enough money from the like yeah yeah not nowhere else could you do that you couldn't do that in chicago nope. make it a full-time job you I, couldn't do it anywhere else i have a friend she's i met her through comedy uh she's a stained glass artist in pasadena yeah yeah it's like there you go yeah. it's fucking awesome like yeah. i was raised with a lot of art like my dad was an engineer but he did a lot of art yeah. Uh, a lot of sculpture, abstract stuff that like really messed up my perception on some things. <laughs> <laughs> like, vaginas are ruined. Eucalyptus <laughs> ruined. Like I don't. Yeah, when you make a, a vagina out of rusted, welded metal, it's, it's ruined done. Me. Done. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. I was just gonna ask, what's the what's the weirdest ice sculpture that's been uh, requ- that you had to work on? Um. There's, are there a lot of dicks? Yeah, well, people think that there are, but there nobody actually has the balls to order a dick. I'll fucking order a dick as soon as I get as soon as I get a fucking. Uh, Listen, I, as soon as you find out, how, what happens is we get a lot of dick calls. Oh yeah, for sure. But then it's like then it's like three thousand dollars, and people are like, Goo, yeah, they're like, mm, never mind. I don't know my if own. I need to, 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 my dick to wilt that fast. <laughs> Uh, like my fiance don't need a giant dick at her uh, freaking bachelorette party that bad. Like I already bought her the damn ring. Shit. Yeah, they're like five hundred dollars. And oh, just that's the base the base rate for whatever the well, tiny sculpture. Yeah, it's like five. It's like uh, four hundred dollars a base rate for a sculpture. And then if you want it to shoot alcohol out of it, like a dick would. So, but it would be like would a dick to. like this size. No. That would be a big one. It'd be a big, 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 nice big dick. Nice big dick. I I mean, for 500 bucks, even just as a joke. Like 40, I'm, I'm going to say for our listeners, like 20 inches wide by 40 <laughs> inches tall by 10 inches thick. Yeah. Like, that so that's the block dick. we're working with. Yeah. We for, can, for 500 bucks, I'm fucking doing it. 500, 550, you get it delivered to your house, and then you get $50 of that back for the deposit for the lights and the, the stand. Yeah, there's like a display thing you gotta put it in. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they're expensive and like everybody always wants a deal. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, like. But that to me seems like that seems very a very low way for a giant fucking dick sculpture. <laughs> that seems. Now, I it, mean, it's like, yeah, for some people, it's like, yeah, it's worth it for like a hilarious stunt. Oh yeah. Like. For me, it's worth it. Like, yeah. I, if I had that money and was like oh, having I, a bachelorette I, party, I would totally spend that money on a yeah. dick. <laughs> I would. So now, so do you guys have <laughs> standard dicks, or would I send you a picture of the dick I wanted? <laughs> um, yeah, you would send us a picture of the dick you wanted, <laughs> preferably like a representation of the dick yeah, that yeah, you yeah. want. <laughs> like a like a like a three D three D like a almost like a dildo. Yeah, well, yeah. they have ice sculpture dicks online that you can view already. So, oh, okay. yeah, you kind of just like oh, look in, at one of those. Oh, it's in the catalog. I see what you're saying. They have, well, no, we don't have a catalog for dice dicks, but the but the <laughs> internet does. Google definitely. <laughs> I mean, of course, there's a part of me that would love to do an ice dick pouring into an ice vagina, right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Just like. Wow, I've actually never heard that before. Right, Corey, and that, that's great. And, <laughs> then, and then you just you put your face on the back of the vagina, and that's where you get the alcohol. Yeah, you get a double pour. You're, you're pouring <laughs> through two sculptures. That's complex. But again, I don't think too bad, right? No, I mean, that's definitely doable. Yeah. Definitely. Huh. But we got a CNC machine now, and they're, they taught me how to program it last time I was in there, and I still don't really know how to, like, 
I haven't like actually drew the stuff yet. But yeah, but is it is it is it it's CAD interface, right? Yeah, it's all it's basically it looks like a Photoshop or Illustrator, yeah. kind of like that, but way more like way less uh, refined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Photoshop it, 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 and it, they're Adobe, so they're millionaires. Yeah, they it's it's probably just yeah. a, it's probably just a vector yeah. graphic program that, exactly. that yeah. if you could just need to put the vectors and there it is because you're really yep. all, that's all you're doing with sculpting anyways is just creating vectors yeah 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 and breaking shit all the time yeah oh sure oh my god oh my god like sometimes especially when it got busy like around christmas time and stuff like me and my boss were like dumb and dumber just like he would fuck up something and i would be like wait let me help and then i would fuck it up more and then like the other way around like we literally had to cut corners off of a table off of a dis- seafood display because each each of us broke a corner just gradually all the corners disappeared <laughs> like, oh, damn. We're, like, we just gotta cut them, we're just gonna cut them off well like, do- it'll look like it's a it's diamond it's supposed to be it's supposed to be that it'll way. look a like poker- it's a, this one's a princess cut a, a okay? poker table <laughs> yeah that's hilarious i also i also think though because ice is kind of forgivable in that yeah. way just fucking make some more ice. Yeah, it's like they in it's also forgivable because no one knows how it's supposed to go. Like the customers aren't gonna call back and complain yeah. about it like not being what they imagined because they are not imagining anything. They don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. They think like I don't know. We've had yeah, we've had a lot of ice dicks come in, but something stuff that I've actually made. Like, I made E.T. one time. Fucking awesome. Swans are very popular during yeah. graduation season, which is That yeah, makes sense. It's not... So cliche, but... Yeah, so hey, cliche. tattoo artists say Tasmanian devils is what pay the fucking mortgage. Oh, my God, really? Yeah. That's so funny. That's, that's, just, that's just what they have to fucking tattoo on people or, or fucking kanji, you know? That's just, what, that's just the job. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. That and, like, seafood displays, definitely, for, like, casinos and stuff like that. That was our bread and butter. And a lot of college students would order shooters, which are just cheaper ice sculptures that shoot alcohol. Yeah. And, like, a dorm would be able to put together, you know, the, the 350 bucks to get that delivered. Oh, the, oh that's, just a, that's just a basic... Yeah, it's just... Ba- it's, like, half of an ice... It's not... Like, an ice sculpture is, like, a sculpture. You're getting an animal. You're getting scripture. Something is going on there. But, like, the shooter is just, like, a slab of ice that we cut uh, a ridge in the middle so you can pour alcohol down it. Boom. And it's, it's straight into the mouth. Boom. So, yeah, people love those. Oh, of course. And now they're uh, now Any they're way gone. to get fucking alcohol in my... Nobody my, wants to do it because COVID. Well, but oh, I see ice that. is self-cleaning. They don't yeah. understand that. It's melting and cleaning itself it all goes. the time. Again, you never... The only you can't time, tell people that. Yeah, well, the only <laughs> time that you hear of people getting, like, let's say, diseases from ice is when the ice melts and there's something already in it before it was like you know whatever the the fucking mammoth that come that gets melted from the permafrost and all these mosquitoes come to life and boom and then everybody gets malaria or whatever or whatever it is yeah which is just impossible because this mosquitoes would die <laughs> Unless they're like your alien mosquitoes or some shit. Well, yeah, that was that was, the, that was the basis of some TV show I watched. Oh, okay. The mosquitoes were coming off of a oh, a mammoth uh, oh, burial boy. site. Isn't he a sweetie pie? Isn't he just a handsome little sweetie pie? He's just looking up at me like, oh, hey, yeah. Oh. He's got a lot of cat, a lot of cat in him too. He's so cute. Isn't he just a little lover? Just loves just being we just hang out all the time I, if if i ever have to get another job i don't know what the fuck i'm gonna do because you can't leave him yeah i'm on disability right now and that's running out very soon but i'll roll uh, into unemployment for a little while yeah but hopefully i can just you know whatever make something uh, podcasting comedy something work yeah that's I mean, what i always do just don't worry about it too much and take it one day at a time and yeah. And then if you have to go on an adventure to San Diego, you've got to go on an adventure to San Diego. And i got to go to San Diego. Yeah. Which is not so bad. At least you're still in California. Yeah, I was about to go to Texas. Oof. The day before I oh, was yeah, supposed I to leave. Oh, yeah, I remember watching your stories. I yes. was going to move to Texas because I was like, I'm going to go. Like, it's going to be, I'm going to be able to afford it. Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then the day before I was supposed to leave, I got put on hold for an Allstate job. I'm like, Allstate, national commercial for car insurance i'm like i'm not fucking leaving yeah. like i have to stay 
This and is, I was like, and then that kind of shit just kept happening, and that's kind of how LA traps you. Yep. It's like a blessing and a curse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is a blessing and a curse. It's like but, if I leave the city for three hours, they'll be like, wait, wait, we need you to come back. Uh, we need you to come back. Yeah. <laughs> it says, I used to do a lot of... Uh, so I, I found that I would always book a a really good... I used to work in television post-production. I'd work yeah. a fucking book a fucking awesome post gig as soon as I signed up for an improv class. I'd sign up for an improv class. No refunds on that shit. Yeah, give my fucking, <laughs> give my 300 bucks to fucking UCB. Damn it. And, and, and then fucking this gig would roll in. And for a little while I'd try to at least, uh, and then at a certain point I'd just, it would just fall apart and I'd have to go to work. Yeah. Uh, this was delightful. Yeah, dude. Thank you so much. Dude, yeah, thank we you. We did it. We finally made it happen. We had a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. no, I was on the I was on the rocks for a while. Like, I was living in San Diego and then uh, Long Beach. Yeah. And Long Beach was a whole another beast yeah. for yeah. another time. Yeah. Well, it's, but also, I just want to <laughs> say. Long Beach was a beach. I say, lo- so long, beach. If you ever need I'll- <laughs> your luck to change, go, come on a hike with me. Because I feel like that's part of what I'm trying to do. Because I feel like hikes. He's nice. Are, or being out in the world is a way of shifting your luck. Shifting it, luck. Yeah. Right? Just if you're if you're out in the world experiencing That's things, you hear. have the opportunity of of make, changing things in the moment. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But if we're if you're on your heels or whatever, then it's like it's hard to thinking, 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 calculating. Yeah. Trying to control, trying to control. Yeah. yeah. It's not but, how shit happens. But yeah. I've learned like a lot, like yeah. Trying to be more lackadaisical like the LA's, you know, people. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's me. I mean, I, I'm from Chicago and, and Dayton and Midwest, and so people are a little more rigid and kind of like, you know, moody out there. And I feel like they're very controlling. And out here, it's like a way more, like, relaxed vibe. Well, I, I'd also say the fact, I mean, obviously, TV drew you here. But the yeah. fact that you were called here means you have some of that in you, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay, let's cut. Sure. Let's cut. Because we can just keep talking and yeah, talking and talking. And the, <laughs> the hike is officially over. All right. What do we do? An hour and a half. Solid. Oh, wow. I thought it would be a little longer than that. Almost over. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. How you people make it this far? Four power to them. Your luck and time.